All right, chip of the day. Everybody loves chip of the day. Uh, this is a, <laughs> look at my magnifying, a Saronix 32 megahertz oscillator. It's marked NTH08HB. And it was built in the sixth week or month of 1996. So yeah, 32 megahertz, that's a pretty good speed. Um, they are in a surface mount package of sorts. Um, so there was kind of a, a, a phase where they did this uh, through hole conversion to surface mount and all they did was just kind of bend the leads under. So there's still a lead frame inside and then you just bend them under Nowadays, I don't think you see it as often. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think you see this kind of uh, package quite as much. Um, I don't have a PC board that's really made for this type of surface mount package, but I think we can just use a regular proto board. Um, and we can, it should be, yeah, it is 100 mil centers. So we can just use one of these and then we'll just chop off chop off as well. I've already used this board for something else. We can just chop off a little bit here and we'll just use uh, we'll just use that. All right. All right, a quick trip to the uh, bandsaw and belt sander and I should have a little area here where we can uh, we can put one of these down and I think we'll go I think we'll go right about there. I'll put a little blob of solder there that we can hook our first leg onto. All right. And then let me see if I can get this to stick. Yeah, there we go. See, I think probably should do this side first. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Get this one from this side, it's easier. All right, there we go. Now we can put some, we can put some wires on this. Uh, see how do I want to do this? Maybe I'll make it so it plugs into a proto board, or maybe we can just put wires on it and power it up. Yeah, we'll just put wires on it and power it up. Let's do that. Now the pin out of these things is always just like a uh, uh, 7400 TTL part. It's just uh, the pin one is usually nothing, and then pin the very last pin on the left is ground the very upper one on this side is VCC we'll assume this is a 5 volt part and uh, then the output is always on the lower right there so yeah let's uh, let's add some wires here so we can grab a hold of things uh, let's do that okay I've put on 5 volts and we have an ugly waveform very ugly waveform so yeah we're getting some some bouncing there we have very long ground leads and stuff on our scope probe 30 megahertz is pretty fast so uh, we will need to shorten our ground distances and see if we can't get it looking better I'm just going to do a really 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 crude bod right here don't look at what I'm doing do not look at what I'm doing because it's very, very ugly. Look at that and much, much better when we get rid of the ground thing. Okay, that's looking better. Now, is this a three volt part? That looks kind of funny. Let's take it down to 3.3 volts and see if it acts any better. No, not really, not really. It's just bad grounding and stuff. So. When you get up to high frequencies, you just can't kind of breadboard stuff and hope for the best. It just doesn't work that way. All right, all right, I'll show you what I was doing. I'll show you what I was doing. It was very, very ugly. But maybe, maybe you like ugly. I don't know. This thing is not focusing right. Let me manually focus it here. 
There we go. All right. So um, I had this long ground lead on, right? And then I had the uh, I had the grabber on here. So I pulled off the grabber, took off the ground. Okay, touching the I'm touching the uh, output here. Now I need a really, really short ground. So I grabbed the screwdriver and just shorted it out. So it's a very, very short path. And uh, let's see if I can put everything in camera. All right, so watch over there while I do my ugly, ugly, ugly trick. All right, I'm gonna push here, then I'm gonna short that little tiny little ground there. Look at that, much, much better. I don't know why it's rising such a slow rise time though. It's got a nice falling edge. I don't know, this looks like a slew rate. It looks like it's slew rate limited. Maybe that's on purpose? I don't know what's going on here. That that's not a ground problem. That looks like it's a slew rate problem from the uh, from the chip. Maybe we need to bypass capacitor on here. So yeah, let's uh let's put a bypass capacitor right across this thing to help the uh help that ugly slew maybe that'll go away hmm what do we want there let's put on i've got i've got tons of 10 microfarad capacitors let's let's just jam one of those on there maybe we want 0.1 32 megahertz yeah 32 megahertz let's put in a let's put in a 0.1 or 0.0 uh, we'll use my favorite we'll use my favorite uh use my favorite capacitor it's 0.01 Point of one. Let's just jam him in there and see if anything happens. Let's see if anything happens. Let's see here. Let's go here. All right. I'm going to put the uh, bypass capacitor on the other side of the board. And it'll be right underneath that chip. It will be right underneath there. I'm not going to even cut off the leads. I'm not going to even do that. All right. Let's put our power supply back on. Let's take a look at our scope again. And let's see here if we can. Oh, look at that. Woo -hoo. Winner, winner. As they say down south, chicken dinner. Okay, so what did we learn? Uh, we learned that bypassing oscillators is a very, very good idea. It's a quick part. It has fast edges. Um, and yeah, having just a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor on the backside, we have totally cleaned things up. And so let me use my ugly scope probe technique again and see if it looks better now. I'm just going to use a long clip lead and a long grabby thing. And yeah, we still see we're still getting ground bounce. So that goes away with the short thing. I was looking for my little spring that you spin on the, um, that you spin on the end of the tip here. And I had it on my desk and it flew away. <laughs> and I don't feel like going to get another one. I do have another one, but, um, yeah, it flew away. And, um, I just haven't been able to find it. It's over there somewhere. It's over there somewhere. Go find it. Um, yeah. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, I did a video on doing short, uh, short length um, scope probe techniques. Um, you can build your own, little, your own too. Maybe I should do that. Should that be part of this video? We'll build a little, uh, or can I just do it here? Oh, there we go. All right. So I'm going to bend this wire. You can't see what I'm doing. You're too far away. All right. All right. This wire here, I'm going to bend that wire over and I got this one here. I'll bend it over. All right. So this is my output, this is ground. Now when I take my scope probe, I can touch it to the output and this ring I can touch to ground, okay? And that's gonna give me a very nice 
a very nice local ground right there. And beautiful. Beautiful. Go back to go back to autofocus, maybe it'll maybe it'll behave itself anyway. There you go. So it's giving a very, very nice clock right at 32 megahertz. Uh, you can take a look at quality of the jitter or anything. No, it looks like a nice clock. Yeah, so there we go. Uh, well, that was better. I thought this was, be, this was going to be a super boring, a super boring video for, uh, for these little parts, but it wasn't. It was a very instructional video. So that's good. <clears throat> Okay, that was chip of the day, 32 megahertz uh, crystal oscillator. Um, and we learned that, we learned two things. One was that we need to have short uh, ground connections to your scope probe so you don't get any ground bounce. And then we also learned that uh, bypassing the oscillator is very, very important. Um, the uh, part was extremely slew rate limited because it didn't have, uh, it had to go all the way down that wire to the power supply. And so now there's a local, there's a local reservoir and it can grab that charge from that capacitor when it needs it, and it smoothed out the uh, smoothed out the rise time. Very nice.